so excited. I cannot freaking believe it's I'm, happening. I'm so fucking stoked. Sam Vanilla is back on YouTube? Let me set the stage real quick, okay? I have just been reunited with my best friend, Dr. D. That's true. We're having a great time. My husband checks out, completely yeah. leaves the conversation. Oh, yeah. I'm sitting in the back too, so it's very appropriate. I'm not, I don't exist for a little while. How you doing back there? Because, <laughs> because he hasn't said anything. <laughs> he says, Sam Onella's back. And I said, shut the fuck up. Yeah, I was, I'm not even shocked. Even though it's a little aggressive, I'm not even shocked. I'm like, yeah, that's the correct I'm response. Like, don't fucking play with me. It's obviously a parody account. Right. Somebody hacked his account or something. Sam Onella is not back. Yeah. And then he reads the title of the video. We could be getting trolled right now. We haven't actually oh, seen it. Don't say that. Oh, sorry. I don't know. Whatever crumbs we can get, Sam. <laughs> Okay, we'll take that. Let's get into it, and then let's see what he addresses in the video to see okay. why he was gone. Okay. I hope he says absolutely nothing. Yeah, you hope he just dives right back in. Makes a couple of jokes. I, I, what, is, what does Ugly God say? Something about water? I don't want any Ugly God references. I just <laughs> maybe make a couple jokes and then just kind of be like, I'm back at this shit. Once every six months, we could survive with. Yeah. Sam. We could do it. You know, you don't have to go back to every, what, other month or whatever he was doing. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, it was an insane production. But if you guys are excited, so are we. Let's get into it. Uh, where scientific names from animals come from. We actually don't know that either. So let's do it. This seems like the correct level of absurdity for a Sam Bonilla video. You I'm know? ready. I'm, I'm, oh, I'm so excited. Let me just. Okay, let's do it. Why can't I hear it? Yes. <sighs> ah, hey kids. I just woke up from a nap I took in January of 2020, and boy are my <laughs> arms tired. Let's see what I missed. <laughs> Queen's dead, war in Ukraine, the Taliban's back. What? What is... Holy shit. They made a movie called Scoob. Unprecedented global <laughs> pandemic, Space Jam 2, some popular guy named Brandon. Yep, that just about covers it. Anyway, we all yeah. know about the scientific names of animals, but did you ever wonder what they actually... That's what I wanted. And yeah. then he moves on. That's yeah. exactly what I wanted. Yeah. I mean, to find out, we must look to taxonomists. They're the guys responsible for the systems of nomenclature we use to what classify... What the fuck is that thing? I actually couldn't... I mean, his, his drawings are fucked up, but Jesus Christ. Anteater? I don't know, Two man. Two taxonomists. They're the guys responsible for the systems of nomenclature we use to classify organisms. And boy, are they convoluted. First, you got the big eight. Domain, kingdom, mm -hmm. phylum, class, mm -hmm. order, mm -hmm. family, genus, species. I've seen yes. plenty of that. mnemonic devices for this, but since the D just showed up in the 90s and is still disputed by some scientists, he's usually not included. So allow me to suggest oh. a few. Dizzy kids puke cereal on fairground staff. <laughs> Dumb kittens pushing cups over feeds growing spite. Like Donkey that. Kong's p <laughs> oh, fucking g serendipitously. The way this whole thing. Do you want to try one? I think wanna, I'm good. I think I'm okay. Fuck. Oh, fucking g serendipitously. The way this whole thing. God damn. Uh, I was like, I was gonna try to do one. I think I love doing that. <laughs> yeah, I was, you know? to, I was thinking, trying to think of something cute, yeah. something witty. No, fuck it. Uh, Pull on Brazzers. Oh my god. It works differ slightly depending on which kingdom you pick. So uh -huh. today we'll be sticking to the animal one because that one's the coolest, and I'm in it. So what constitutes each taxon is pretty arbitrary. They basically just serve to act as another set of branches in the tree that taxonomists build. The one exception is species, which is generally defined as any group of animals that can have babies with each other that aren't sterile freaks. Mule, Liger, <laughs> Zedonk, Skunk Ape. They can live fulfilling lives, but they're all shooting blanks, so they don't count. On the <laughs> other hand, in our innumerable trespasses against God, we can make things like Chidanedanes, which actually work, so dogs are dogs are dogs. Besides yeah. species, though, Jesus it's the Wild Christ. West in here. Plenty of times, eight tiers isn't even enough for scientists, so they just stick yeah. new sub-levels in between. Legions, cohorts, tribes, series, divisions, and if you want to keep going, you oh can throw all God. kinds of prefixes on any of these for even more layers. So wait, there's a thing called hypo cohorts or giga cohorts? Or sub, no. Sub tribes? I know that. 
That's real though. Co I thought cohorts was just an insult. <laughs> It's actually like a class of... Chavez and his cohort. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, you know, like thieves or bandits. Oh my God. I've never seen it in like a positive light before. There's even subspecies, which the more pedantic of you may think to yourself that creating names for subspecies at all kind of undermines the single somewhat agreed upon definition in the whole tree. To that, my mm -hmm. friends, taxonomists say, uh -huh. but while that's pretty complex, <laughs> the actual names themselves are pretty easy to wrap your head around. Though taxonomists okay. may hide behind their fancy Greek and Latin, the Vulgate is no substitute for wit. Now, I've scraped through the scientific names of a load of species, Jesus and Christ. most of them can be split into a few categories. Oh the simplest ones are the animals that already have names in Greek or Latin. It's a lion. I'm calling it Leo. Done. Tiger, it's a tigris. Cat, it's a caddis. Easy. Multi-word names Easy. can be translated the same way. For the golden eagle, we got Aquila Chrysatos. Gold eagle eagle. They decided to be a show off and do eagle in Greek and Latin. Essentially the same though. But if a species is too specific or exotic for a one-to-one -one translation, that's when you gotta get a little creative. A lot of the time, inspiration comes from just giving the creature the old once-over and pointing out some cool looking body part. Generally, the more distinct of an identifying feature it is, the more likely it'll get in the name. For example, Homeboy took one look at this thing and said, Yup, red triangle slug. I'm going on break. <laughs> we call this thing a fucking unicorn, almost like that means one horn or something. Also, some guy deadass looked at an octopus and said, Well, all they got is heads and feet. I'm gonna call them head foot. And now biologists <laughs> everywhere say cephalopod unironically. Oh my Matter god. Is that what fucking cephalopod oh means? Oh my god. Is head foot? I think so, because like if you think about like hydrocephalus, I think that's when you have like water in your brain. Mm hmm Yeah. Damn it. They got us. In fact, if it's got feet, chances are that's part of its name somewhere. You got four feet, six feet, eight feet, ten feet, two feet, equal feet, both feet, double feet, stomach feet, lip feet, sucker feet, wing feet, big feet, stomach. slow feet, four feet, both feet, joint feet, no feet, ten thousand feet, cow's feet, spade feet, cat feet, small feet. If it doesn't look that, that interesting, great. another thing to point out is where you found it. This could be a territory like American bear or Siamese mm -hmm. crocodile, or just a habitat like woods macaque or toilet rat. But that's boring. We need to look at the men behind the magic and what drives in most motivates them. Now, if there's one thing that the scientific community loves, it's clout. And there's no better way to go down in history than plastering your own name on some shit you found. But not yeah. all fields have the same volume of things to scribble the old John Hancock over. On the one end, you got physicists just making up their own slightly different form of ionizing radiation measurement. And even mm -hmm. then, only the top dogs got away with it. Now, zoology, any little goober flouncing through the underbrush can say, this one has 13 spots, but the one in the books only got 11. I will call him Splinkus' Ladybird. Alternatively, plenty of biologists have given shout outs to their contemporaries, both other biologists and those across the academic gamut, from geologists to physicists to explorers and more. Naturally, Darwin's got a shitload, but even the background characters get immortalized one way or another. Who are? I want to know who named one after their side piece. Someone did it. Someone absolutely did it. Don't mind us, we woke up in the morning to do this. Good morning. Yeah, I actually thought about... Um, you, you just like left. I was so confused. I was like ready for our alarm to start going off because it's so early. <laughs> but, you know, but you brought that up, right? And you're yeah. like, okay, name one of your side piece. And I'm just like, what if it's like a really like nerdy, you know, scientific love triangle. Oh my God. You know, you're like Arnold Schwarzenegger, like got that girl pregnant, bought her a house. You know, yeah. he gets some girl pregnant. She's like, I can't go to the field anymore. It's all your fault. Right. And he finds a slug and she's like, you know what you have to do. <laughs> some some lonely scientist out there is watching his dream girl be married to a fucking Chad. Mm -hmm. And he just like, he's like, she'll know I love her when she hears the name oh, of this beetle. Oh, that's a good one too. Yeah. Like a unrequited love, yeah. you know? Yeah, yeah, that would be cute in like a really nerdy way. A little less scandalous than what I was originally going for. <laughs> Name it Judy for the girl with the big butt. I like to put a big old butt beetle. Some, somebody's <laughs> wife is at home sobbing because her husband named, <laughs> named an animal after some woman she's never if heard I, of. She's like, who's this one? If I found like a, a mite or something like that, I'd name it after you, babe. Don't name a bug a after me. Little bug, little no. creepy, ugly ass bug. You know what I'm saying? Like, you had to be a real nerd to enjoy that. Oh my God.
Lamar Thompson, Grant Summering, Erlinger, Speak, and Cuvier? I don't know, but they've all got gazelles, so they must be pretty oh, cool. Of course, okay. other times, the name checks go to people who had fuck all to do with anything except for one taxonomist being a fan of theirs. <laughs> Plenty of popular celebrities have species named oh, after them, but since all the big cute stuff was found and branded a while ago, most of these idols are commemorated through repulsive little invertebrates. You got Scaptia, Beyonce, the only no, similarity nice. I can gather here is Queen Bee, looks like a bee, both not a real bee. There's Anomphilus jagarius, an old no, stone named it's after not. a stone. So In 2007, cool. one Jason Bond, a professor of biology at UC Davis, dubbed this little dude Myrmechiophila Neil Youngie to no, honor his favorite movie, Neil which Youngie. caused my man Stephen Colbert to go on TV and profess his <laughs> utter indignation at not having a spider named after himself. So naturally, the next year, Bond actually went on the Colbert Report That's to true. announce the naming of Apostatist Stephen Colbert. So, if that gives any of you epic biologists out there any ideas, you know, I wouldn't be opposed. Find a thing that causes stomach pain, like you have salmonella, and name it after salmonella. Do it. Oh, please, I would do anything. For the love of God, I'll even take a liking. The world of politics is by no means <laughs> immune to this phenomenon. Obama alone has fucking nine, as do a what? load of other presidents. Oh. Trump's got a moth with funny hair, Bush has ah. a fungus beetle, Reagan's a wasp, Carter's got a darter, and so forth. Even Austria's most famous Ooh. painter got the honor through this blind cave beetle. Mind you, it was really? 1933, so you can only blame the guy a tiny bit. Hitler actually yeah. wrote him a letter saying, oh, thank you, my little entomalo mensch, and then went on to do, you know, <laughs> Hitler things. Fun fact, not only was this beetle stuck with just about the worst name you could have. It's also now facing extinction solely because of its value to Nazi memorabilia collectors. Guess what? Have it die hard. Fuck out of here. But I guess just because you're a Nazi doesn't mean that you don't like insects. I, you know? I guess. I guess. So I fictional... guess Nazis can have other interests other than being garbage cans characters have their fair share of species under their belt. On the topic of evil beetles, this one's named after Darth Vader because he kind of looks like his helmet, I guess. That's this was cool. actually named by the same guy who did the bush one and belongs to the same genus. Hmm. There's also this mite, genus Darth Vaderum, which is a lot more accurate <laughs> and frightening. In 2012, a single bone from above the eye socket of a hitherto unidentified theropod dinosaur was being studied. And suddenly, under the light of the full moon, the guy working with the specimen had his neck cover with hair and his lips clench into a pog and his endocrine system fill with soy and he said, it's just like the eye of Sauron. And then he started chewing on Funko Pops and sweating cream of meme and snorting G Fuel and shitting D20s everywhere until the prostate stimulation made him. The dino's genus is now Sauron. <laughs> I don't think it fully set in what was happening oh until God. the very end. I was like, okay. Yeah, it's like, where is it going, dude? Very extended way of calling somebody a soy boy, all right? Made him the dino's genus is now Sauroniops <laughs> from Eye of Sauron. This spider was named after Godric Gryffindor because it looks like the sword hat. Cool. SpongeBob like has not a sponge, hat. but a fungus. The legendary birds from Pokemon each have their own, you guessed it, beetle. And the list goes Sick. on. <laughs> Scientists are nerds. Who Wait a minute. It's all he gonna didn't, be bugs. He didn't say bird. What the fuck? Fuck, no, of Sam. course it's gonna be bugs. What the fuck? There's so many fucking bugs, and people don't give a fuck about bugs, so Whoa. they're gonna name Whoa. them whatever they Whoa. want. Whoa! Relax. I don't really care that much, but I like them. They're cool. All right. New. Anyway, while this all seems kind of chaotic, there is some method to the madness. One rule okay. is the Punch principle really of good. priority. This states that once somebody publishes their chosen name for a species for the first time, that's the name, and other taxonomists typically can't change it. This Damn. has led to plenty of misnomers coined by whoever got their foot in the door first, particularly in the up. case of the guys doing this stuff before we had the luxury of genetic analysis. Here's mm -hmm. one. Red panda? Nah. Shining oh, cat, yeah. coined in 1825. <laughs> to be fair, they're actually about as close to cats as they are to actual pandas, so right. whatever. Here's two. Capsicum chinensi. Eaten there? Sure. Native? Only off by around half a globe where literally God all hot damn. peppers came from. This principle holds yeah. true even if someone thinks they found a new species, only to later discover that it was already named. For example, in 1824, one John Edward Gray documented the plain zebra, calling it Equus burchellii, or Birchell's horse, named after okay. a renowned naturalist of the day. Little did he know, back in 1785, some other douche classified this character as the quagga. The last quagga died in a Dutch prison in 1883. So, 
Why do we care? Well, in the 2000s, what? scientists decided to scrape some gunk off a dry quagga pelt and study its DNA. And from that, they realized, wait a minute, apparently this guy and zebras could have, you know, made a little plaid in the hay together. So technically, they're one species. <laughs> and today, they're both called quagga. Sounds kind of asinine, but then again, so does asinus, and that worked out fine. <laughs> Just to maintain the distinction, the extinct subspecies was renamed quagga quagga, so you know it's the real quagga. This double naming convention Thanks. has been done with a lot of subspecies. That's in fact, very true, wild, actually. wild horse, spotted, spotted panther, or my favorite, gorilla, gorilla, gorilla. Just like, yeah, it's the gorilla's gorilla that ever gorilled. <laughs> Fuck you want from me. A closely related rule also states that the names of all taxa have to be unique. So if two people coincidentally name that? any taxa on the same thing, the older one gets to stay and the new one gets the boot. Like if you saw a genus called echidna, you'd think it was, you know, an echidna, right? right. Well, no, that'd make too much sense. For a while it was true, from 1797 to 1811. Then it was it's pointed out that time. someone else already called a genus of moray eels echidna back in 1788. So the real oh. echidna had to be changed to tachyglossus or quick tongue. Then a decade later, a dude did the same thing for a genus of vipers. Another 22 years passed, people discovered the same thing, and they were renamed to bitis because they bitis. That one at least made a... <laughs> That might be my new favorite. <laughs> that might be my new Past, people discovered the same thing, and they were renamed to Bitis because they Bitis. That one at least made a bit of sense, given that the original echidna from Greek mythology was half lady, half snake, but who cares at this point? Anyway, I've just barely scraped the surface of all the goofy names out there, so feel free to post more down below. That's all I've got for now. Until Do another next time, one. I'm Sam Manella, and I'll see you in 2025. All right, man. If that is the only video we get until uh -huh. 20, the end of 2023, yes. was it enough? It deserves yes. a rewatch. We could do like a highlights of this video, I think, yeah. looking into some of the other stories. It feels like he hasn't lost it. No, he's it's got it. It's been two years he's got and it. he's still just as quick. Yeah. He's still just as witty. You know? He's still so far out of my wheelhouse, I trust half the things he says implicitly. <laughs> yeah. and have I'm to not sitting here questioning <laughs> anything. And you know, we've had a lot of uh, losses in YouTube world over the past couple of years. Yeah. You know, Sorrow TV, mm -hmm. Soot House, Sam yeah. Monella. It's all the S. What is, yeah. What's going on over there in S world? That's a good point. What is happening? Just so y'all know, Skitten Says is here to stay. But, um, shameless plug. Hey, no problem. Uh, <laughs> yeah. But no, we, but we, and, and so this is the first one we've had come back. Yeah. And it gives me hope, even though I know it shouldn't. That is great. Um, yeah, I actually really enjoyed this video. I'm glad that you guys were just as excited as coming back as we are. I haven't put it out yet, but I'm sure you guys are really excited. I feel like you should put this out unedited. Fuck it. Give it to them raw and uncut. Yeah, I mean, there's nothing else to cut. I mean, it's gonna throw out the part where I literally left this camera screen and my wife just probably sat here and stared at nothing for a while. I was just very confused. I just had no clue what was going on. But yeah, we really enjoyed this video. We got up at six in the morning to do this. So, you know, we wanna get this out the same day for sure. But yeah, I had a great time, man. Thank you guys for joining us. I'm like, I'm feeling so excited, so happy, so celebratory. We have, do we have one of those confetti poppers around that you bought that I told you not to buy, but you we bought actually, anyway? We actually definitely do. <laughs> I'm going to give this one another run. Okay. You All know? Right. Yeah. We need a good we need a good picture for the thumbnail. Oh, my God. That really encapsulates what we just went through. Bitches, because they bitches. <laughs> That's not going to come through in video form. Maybe this guy. Oh, my God. <laughs> you have to have Sam in the photo, though. Dude, I think I really like videos like this that are just so fucking random because right. they actually are literally about everything that we live our life around. I just and it's just based off complete and utter bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to know how he decided that like this was the video to come back on. I bet you this is what he's studying. I, I, I need to, I need to know. I bet you I bet you he's studying this. Yeah. You know, I bet you he's just like in there taking like classes or whatever. And, and like the, that's how this came up. But anyways, we'll see you guys in the next one. Thanks for joining us. And uh, we'll be around. Hopefully more stuff's coming out. This is gonna come out before the Internet Historian video probably, because that video is in like an hour and 40 minutes or something like that. Yeah. Something like that. Yeah. And, um, and you'll see me on my wife's channel doing some other random stuff. What are we doing on her channel? There's a Zeus video I gotta find. Okay. All right, uh, probably some memes. We've got some extra history to do. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, and whatever else we find, because we can do whatever the fuck we want. Sure.
All right, see y'all around, man. Bye. Thanks. Uh, th we won't do anything more exciting the rest of the year. So this was it. Yeah. Merry Christmas. <laughs> Christmas and Halloween. Oh my God, everyone was right.